Uh, oh, let's put my camera on might be an idea okay good after good good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you may be um it we're back after we had a little break from doing asterisk last week um so uh we're, so we're back today with asterisk and the cauldron so we'll see who's in the chat i think dave's in there um and one yeah. ring good to see you guys yeah so um so um how you been hissy anyway i mean I'll, apart from the you know stuff we won't get into but how you been how you been half wise yeah not too bad just keeping on keeping on um yeah you know doing what we can my city is currently back in lockdown mm. just, don't get me started um but yeah. yeah keep keeping as positive as we can and trying to deal with it so let's uh, yeah. let's crack on i think because i do enjoy i i this asterix and the cauldron came along at a good time for me i've mm. enjoyed this one yeah well i'll be getting that up shortly so yeah this i'm gonna say before we get into it uh, this was one of my absolute um favorites as a kid oh sorry is that come up on screen I'll... yeah this and it's been years, years since I've read this, um, and it still stands up. It's still funny. Um, it's it's pretty light-hearted. This one, um, yeah, not too controversial. Just the one, one or two images we we have to skip past for obvious reasons, yeah. but nothing too bad. Um, this one was this one was just a lot of fun. Um, so, shall we dive into it? yeah let's, let's um again this is uh this is fun um yes rain keep calm and carry on and all that very british yep. absolutely absolutely he's and getting there said, with English. yeah nothing a cup i can't fix yeah yeah so let me just bring up where's my amazon window so we have the com comment here let's get to the first page Okay, I'm gonna just enlarge this a bit so people can actually see what we've got on screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so book begins off. It's uh, springtime, and you know, and all's well, all sort of well in the village. Um, apart from uh, fully automatics warning cacophonics that you better not sing, um, as usual. Um, mm. And then there becomes an announcement of an official. Um, visit from another ghoulish chieftain chief whose morals are lastics and his men are on their way which is a bit of a clue it. about this guy already isn't it yeah a little bit um kind of weren't that surprised by the conclusion mm. with his name alone but fun nonetheless yeah um so they call a council meeting and um i do like this this comment on him I don't like him. He's tight fisted and he'll do any sort of deal with the Romans for money. Mm. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, however, he is a Gaulish chief, so he must obey the protocols. I don't like him, but put kettle on anyway. Yeah. That's what that yeah. Is. Oh, I love this one. They're, they're doing the official meet and greet at the bottom. And um, now, boys, decorum, dignity nobility in the next one this this is the other chief watch him mate bit warm eh? now how about a jar <laughs> so you could that, yeah. that is definitely that's definitely you can tell that this is a english per, english person who's translated this oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's very sort of is that yeah that's south Lo south london yeah it's a bit so it's a bit so yeah watch your mate it, yeah a bit, bit del boy isn't it mm. Mm. um well, I don't think Peckham is South London. I don't know. Yes, it's sort <laughs> of, yeah. Yeah. I I try to, I 
I've said a couple of times before, actually, a couple of other conversations this week. I, I can only take London for maybe two or three days tops, and I just want to be out of there. I don't. I'm not a fan of the place, but yeah, a week and I'm I'm done. It's yeah. I couldn't live there. That's just, that's just me, but. Um, I could live on the outskirts and have like a train line into the museums and things, but I couldn't live in the centre. Yeah, I'd, I'd go mad. Yeah. So, um, so I asked him if he's come uh, by him, himself, and he said, "No, no, no, I bought me a retinue." So here come his like his entourage and his shield bearers, but there's a instead of him being carried on it, there's a cauldron being carried on the, the shield. Yeah, I think with this one. This, this is interesting to me from a sort of moralistic point of view of he values his, what, what's in the cauldron more than he values his own dignity. Yes. Which is an interesting comment on the character. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're finding out all about him. And he said, yeah, it's not, it's, I had to walk, not much room on these shields. Um, he said, you mean you gave up your, sh your your shield to this cauldron? What's so special about it? And, and um, of course, it's full of sesterity by two Tartars. Come over here. I've got something to tell you. So it's full of money. Yeah. Um, it's full of money. Oh, now, and for those watching wondering why I'm staring at my phone, I've got the comic open on my phone. So yeah, I can see okay. it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, see, I'm 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 reading this because I'm sort of reading this. Um, it's a bit weird because you know I don't have the Kindle thing open as a tab, so I'm always having to sort of go between Streamyards and the Kindle with this. But um, so we get down to the bottom, and then he's explaining that Caesar's in some great financial difficulties. Um, He's used the taxes which were going to pay for his garrisons in Gaul to equip his armies for new campaigning. So basically Caesar's um, about levying more taxes against people. So he says, I put all my people's savings in this cauldron. I bought it to you for safekeeping. I don't believe you pay taxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, um, the, 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 the conversation that goes on next is, an interesting one. It, it's just mm. fun, isn't it? Mm. A tax collector showed up once. We haven't paid any since, and that that just yeah. says it all. I just yeah. Um, mm. And they're just giggling away at that idea. Um, you, I love that. You mean he never returned? And another nice little pun from Asterix there. That's right. No return. No tax. Tax return. No taxes. <laughs> Yeah, which so, is again another interesting one. Yeah, uh, and then we go on to the next page, and we have yeah. um, yes, after um, it's tight, he's gonna look after it. Sorry, my phone, my phone was just buffering then, and I was fearing the worst. Sorry, so Ooh. I was like, oh no, not again, but it's not jinx it. Don't jinx it. No, okay. I don't jinx it. Um, um, it says, it says, when I knew the Roman, what the Romans intended to do, I, I didn't hesitate. I grabbed the first available container, threw out the onion soup simmering inside, and I filled it with all my sesterite. Yeah. <laughs> and I bought it, bought it to you guys for safe, safekeeping. Um, um, the Romans would never dare look for it here. And I love this, what Skedefix asked him. But you couldn't have... Uh, you couldn't you have like hidden the money, buried it? Um, oh, th this is a great line. Um, the yeah. Romans are always excavating. There are so many buried taxes about they'll probably be getting dug up for centuries to come. And of course, we're constantly finding hoards and coins and things. Yes. Um, so he's not indeed. wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's that is. Um, yeah, though, and this is uh, just common ancient practice anyway, burying hoards and uh, money. And yeah, well, it's a lot of the I'm sure a lot of the time they forgot, some people would forget when they buried them. Well, the thing is, yes. coins didn't necessarily. Coins are a very. Mm. It, in world history, they're relatively modern, first yes. of all. Um, 
they weren't about in the Mycenaean age, which is sort of the hero era of Greece with Achilles and all them. Yeah. So they weren't about then. Um, and we know there were coins by Roman times. So they yeah. seem to have been invented somewhere in the middle. Mm. I don't know exactly when. Please don't. Yeah. I, yeah. We, we so, Neither one of us are actually sure of the history on when coinage started. But Yeah. Um, co coinage is one of those. They're pretty to look at. But yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Um, so, I mean, this is definitely coins exist in this era. So it's not an anachronism or anything. Um, but it, we do find them a lot. But the whole idea was coins are heavy. Mm. They are heavy. And if you are a single traveler wandering around, it's very well known with the Vikings. They bury it with the intent of coming back. But for whatever oh, yeah. reason, they don't make it back. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the times, I know a bit about like, Vikings, and it's, um, I mean, I suppose gold was very, very valuable, but generally they seem to be big on silver to the Vikings, but I suppose it was a little easier to get hold of than gold as well. And, um, um, but they, they were very big on silver with the Vikings. Yeah, um, it's, it, it's mining it as well, isn't it? Um, yeah. So it, it's that, that's the. Okay, all right, just going to. Just put my camera back on a sec. Sorry, I just to sort myself out. So, okay, where are we now? Okay, so I love the bit that comes on mm. next one. Now. He, so he said, yeah, it's a good idea for like to prevent the you know Romans look. He says, but vital statistics. So I thought you were in their good tablets, <laughs> poster books, yeah. especially as, as the Romans like people who pay their taxes. And he takes offence to this. He's like, what? He says, you have no doubt. You've no right to doubt my patriotism. I may do Roman business with the Romans, but I make them pay twice the price I would have charged my Gaulish customers. And they're like, well, that's good. <laughs> and it would, and it would, then the next thing was, do you do much business with Gauls? He said, uh, no, the Romans, they buy everything I have to, I've got to sell. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, that's just I, love, I just chuckled at that. I yeah, really did. It's, it's the classic one, isn't it? Like, yeah. uh, sort of chewing on the hand that feeds you a little bit. Yeah. Um, um, um so they so he grew so vital statistics agrees that and he's gonna and, and who else is he going to entrust the task of guarding the coins to but asterix of course of course um so and, here um, we go i've just gone to the next page these so asterix goes to put a cauldron in his hut um I love Obelix, of course. Following on behind. Following on behind. And how silly. Fancy throwing out good onion soup to make room for Sesterti. <laughs> but Obelix, with Sesterti, you can buy onion soup. Well, that's the point. Why throw out the onion soup when it was in the cauldron already? He, um, I, I mean, he's got a point. Yeah. Um, it's kind of reminiscent of the, there's a... Uh, it's a sweet little poem, poem did um, a few lines by Christina Rossetti, mm. uh, for, um, poet sister of the famous Dante Rossetti of the Renaissance art mm. movement. Um, there's, a, there's a little poem she wrote called The Diamond or a Coal, which is quite, it, it's off the top of I had to learn it off by heart when I was a child um and I vaguely remember it but the the idea is you know um what was it yeah. a diamond oracle sir a diamond <laughs> if you please true tech Who cares about a call beneath the some beneath the summer trees yeah I sorry I just yeah. thought true tech put in the comments <laughs> I slice them up and toss them in the cauldron of deliciousness yeah oh uh. true but yeah, the, the the general idea is, you know, you want what's necessary, not what's pretty. Yes. So Obelix has got a point. Yeah, and he, he clearly, I mean, obviously, generally, when it comes to food or money, you know, Obelix. He's yeah, Obelix has got his priorities straight. I will give him that. Yeah. And so Asterix says he's going to stand guard, puts it in his in his heart, going to stand guard all night, and he's he, and. 
He said, well, there's going to be a banquet in Chief Moral, whose moral elastic uh, honour. Um, I don't like to deprive dogmatics of. And he says, go off you go, Obelix. You know, it's yeah. like... That's the best thing. Is and he says, he, yeah. he says he'll bring Asterix something to eat. He said, you know, yeah, he won't be... Anything left. Yeah, which we get to the next pitch panel. Um, I do love this comment from the Chief there to Obelix. You yeah. eat well. <laughs> yeah, you've got like, I mean, just they're lining up. What's that? Three or four boars. He's in the middle of just devouring. A I mean, in a, yeah. I couldn't. I, I mean, looking at the rest of these characters, I don't know that I could eat one whole woman roast boar. You know. Yeah, I looking think. at them, it does look kind of like. I mean, there's a really good, um, yeah. not sponsored, I will say, but if you go to. Blackpool and you go to Coral Island in the Buccaneer Bar inside, mm. they do a really good whole chicken. Mm. And that takes two people to eat it. Yeah. That because they, they, it's chicken with chips and, and everything. It's massive, but and boars are not small animals. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like uh. well then yeah, but the next thing uh, suddenly Obelix remains oh do you know what? I forgot all about Asterix. I must. I've got to take him something to eat. Yeah. And the chief, the rival chief, a chief whose morals are lasted, actually offers. Said, "Just now, you sit there, and enjoy yourself. I'll take it to him. I've, I've got a bit of information for him anyway. Mm. Just make sure he's um um." And he says, "Well, you're welcome. I don't like breaking off between two boars." <laughs> oh. uh. Nice little pun there, I think. And ring, ring. I love what you just referenced in the uh, from the Blues yes. Brothers here. I love Four that. Four fried chickens in a cook. And Jake, shit, the Blues Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and the oh, other no. one wants, what is it, two guys dressed up like Hasidic diamond merchants or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aretha Franklin, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Right. You just gotta love so, the commentary of that film. There's a, there's a, there's a Blues Brothers quote for everything. Mm. It's like the Godfather. Yeah, the absolutely. Blues Brothers quote for everything. Yeah, I always uh, I always uh, always uh, might might have to we might have to you might have to do that on like Media Musings at some point. Ring, hint, hint. You know, <laughs> if you haven't done it already, that is no, he's I've done the Blues it. Brothers already. Um, oh no, I must have. How did I miss that? We did it, and we right. upset. Um, a, an Uber fan who couldn't make it on, <laughs> so that was fun. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, that was fun, but yeah, mm. um, we that we just ended up quoting the film. I, we gave so many quotes in that film. I'm very surprised that it didn't get a copyright strike. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, with that being said, let's not tempt fate. <laughs> yes, let's not tempt fate. Um. Yeah, so Asterix is on guard. Holt, who goes there, and it's so that's the chief. Says, well, only me, just glad to see you're on alert. And he's you know, doing my duty. Yeah, and he brings him out, brings some stuff over here. He says, Yeah, I'll bring this over here. You'll be more comfortable while you eat. Just wanted to warn you some Roman patrols spotted us on our way here. He said, Nothing to fear, the Romans won't get their hands on your, on your um, treasure. I sh you know, I shall bring them them back to you myself. Just so Asterix has yeah. now taken um has taken responsibility for this money. Yes. Yeah. So they they the two chieftains part way, um all um and you know our, our honor is the guarantee. So everyone's and then at the end of the night, everyone's gone to bed except Obelix, who is busy um, finishing off what's left of the boars. Um, yeah. Doc Maddox is asleep beside him, even he's had enough. Yeah. Um, and Asterix, of course, standing guard. Yeah. So, so, sunrise. I've got to comment on this. The beautiful artwork in this sunrise. Yeah, and the way that the the stones of the building for the next few, few panels. Yeah, I'm just I'm just really well done. a little bit actually. Um, 
for this because this is one I mean, we commented on this before um um albert adirzo was an incredibly gifted artist i think but i i really love a lot of the like we said before i love a lot of the landscapes and backgrounds he draws he draws um mm. probably more than the sort of characters and that themselves but um i'll just put that back down okay so and hey yeah. true tech where are your grandparents from because when you talk about english accents jeff and i couldn't be more yeah. this apart from each other in England. oh yeah yeah we're uh we're very Pretty much the end of the country very much so so anyway. you got a you got a southern you got a southern boy in a yorkshire lass here i'm afraid yeah so, so you decide which one of those is a problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so here so, we go. I, I love the idea of the the um I must get ready to wake them all up. The idea of the bird cockerel, watching the time. Yeah. The rooster, <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Um but off we go anyway. Um so Obelix is going to get some rest. Well, as Asterix as well is in Obelix is still finishing off boar. Um Asterix to his horror then finds the cauldron is empty. Oh, yeah. So, and Obelix, goody. Now we can make some onion soup to put in it. <laughs> so, you know, there we go. Obelix yeah. still got his priorities in that same place. I do have it's to say, I don't know if it's obvious on your Kindle version. On mm. mine, the colours are a lot brighter quite possibly um it might just be my phone possibly. as well though to be fair i but I, I mean i've noticed sometimes with the with these um when we've had like what when you've had like a printed one or something and i've had the kindle that this there's, there's some there's some updated artwork and like just yeah. with color just with colors and stuff really yeah um now asterisk saying that they made a hole in the back of my hut the thieves have got got away with the money so you know, like keep keep calm. You just all have a look around the village and the old <laughs> cockerel here. It's brilliant. Go, I do like all their pajamas. Yeah. I just Once love that. Obelisk is not the odd one out in the way he's dressed. Yeah. Which is just amusing to me. I love the idea of Obelix just lives in his pajamas. That's yeah, my he, just, he, he, he just lives in his britches, basically. Um Yeah. And they're all, I love that little little Talk about redundancy, the poor little chicken to the rooster. Yeah, poor rooster. Mm. So if we go on to the next page. We got so we got a so there's um kind of a asterisk is being brought before the chief and the sort of the sort of bit of a council meeting, shall we say? Mm. Um for some reason Cacophonix is on there as well as the village bard, but I suppose bards would have been fairly well respected in good in Gallic traditions, although even though Cacophonix is a uh, musical talent, as we know, are less than appreciated in this village. But there is a logic to saying that the person who tells the stories and sings yeah. the songs should be there for the major decisions. Yeah, there's in, a logic in, to that. In a way, you look at it. You look at the four that are there. In some ways, it makes in a weird way it makes sense. You've got the chief, the druid, mm. the bards. And then geriatrix who's the oldest man in the village so mm. in a lot of ways that little panel up there kind of makes sense mm -hmm. um it actually sort of makes sense if you think about if you, you think about it um yeah i think that generally older people in the villages and that and those traditions were treated with a bit of uh reverence, reverence. and respect yeah um, um robert x has got a fair point why didn't they just take the cauldron too yeah we'll uh because the cauldron we, is a plot yeah. point and the money is the mcguffin but pretty much yeah <laughs> um and um oh well, this is the thing they said we have a debt of honor to pay here at asterix the, the chief entrusted us with his cauldron and sisterity and Obelix actually said, well, if you give him back the cauldron, that will pay up, pay off half the debt. Mm. <laughs> um, you know. 
I, I do like um, this thing. So then they decide they're going to banish um, Asteris because he's failed in his duty. Which, mm. dereliction of duty, yeah. 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 Um, you know, so I'm sure anyone who's ever served in the military has got some great stories about Firewatch. Yeah. Uh, cough, cough, because I know my husband does. <laughs> um, um, but um, so... and these, these lines in the next row of panels, um, they're both manglings oh, of awesome. laconic phrasing. I yeah I know I, I you probably spotted more of them than I have. I want there's one that I did spot straight away. Um, yeah. But, um, so I um, shall return in the cauldron or not return at all. Yeah. And the next um, one is one I picked up on. With your cauldron or in it, those are definitely both kind of yeah. paraphrases of the Spartan uh, mm. mothers' and wives and yeah. with your shield on it. Um, That's, apparently, this is something they said, or said, supposed to have said to their sons, of what if they've been going out to battles with your yeah. with your shield or on your shield. So, in other yeah. words, win or die. This effectively is what their what their own mothers are telling them. Yeah, because um, the, the idea was it's this very militaristic society based around um, that entire thing. But yeah. the whole point of if you're a soldier on the ground in yeah. Um, fighting styles of which the Spartans would have been involved. Yeah. I don't think I, the, I can't your remember. Your shield where, is yeah. the last thing you're going to drop. I can't remember. So, which, yeah. yeah. I, can't, I can't remember which Star Wars fan there uh, was I pissed off the other week when I told them that the Jedi Order is a lot like the Spartan Nagogi, <laughs> taking, young bo taking young boys away from their families and training them to be warriors. I mean, um, you're not wrong. The thing about mm. Star Wars is there's a lot of it is based on practices yeah. of the Roman Empire, and a lot of Roman Empire practices are based on things mm. like Sparta and Athens. Yeah. So you're probably not wrong if you trace it back. Yeah. Um, so. Well, um, get a fix. He gives uh, Asterix a um, gourd of magic potion for his. Um, so basically, he's been told. Asterix, he can return if he finds the money, or he's got, they've got, they've got a debt to pay off, is what they, they, they're saying. Yeah. And um, Asterix, Obelix isn't entirely aware of what's going on. He's in, in a get of it, uh, to some, um, he's been banished, but he'll come back someday. And um, Obelix goes off after him. He said, I'm not let you know, I'm not going. In, in, not can't let um asterix go off by himself um this panel's just adorable i love the idea of yeah asterix can't possibly cope without obelix and yeah i'm not here uh, to and poor him. asterix feeling sorry for himself but obelix yeah. there's a really good friend hey hops uh, hey hops watch how are you buddy so and, and I, I have to say, in that top panel there, Asterix mm. really does look sorry for himself all on his yeah, own. Yeah, he's he looks looks down. It's like a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> if and, anyone's um, ever seen a puppy's ears go down when it's really sad, yeah. Well, I love this. And he, say, he tells Obelix to go back to the village. He said, no, no, we're basically banished. We'll be banished together. You know, yeah. You know, I'm not leaving. And whatever you say about her. <laughs> And, this, and again, this in this whole page is just sums up Asterix and Obelix's friendship so well. Yeah, it's just so wholesome. It is. It is. Um, but also the other side of it as well that yeah, you know, that they're all they're all cugging and crying, making up. Um, and we'll fill the we'll fill the cauldron up, and he said, "Right, where can we get the onion soup?" And he's like, "No yeah. money." It says. <laughs> And then they start yelling at one another. Yeah. I do I do like this comment from Obelix. Did you really think we'd let you do a banishing act? Yeah. I Which is it. a pun worthy of ring. Um, yeah. Um I didn't ask you to follow me. Um, you know, you and your money, it's Yeah. And then like they always do whenever they start. Whenever they get angry at one another, 
minutes later they all they hug and make up and you know poor animals in the woods though were like what's going on here yeah <laughs> you're there booing dogmatics howling his head off <laughs> yeah ring's got a point i'm going to mordor alone and i'm going with you yeah <laughs> yeah that's exactly what this is it's very salmon frodo isn't it yeah it's very um, very much very much so uh Although there is far more um, undercurrent to Sam and Frodo than there is to Asterix and Obelisk. Yeah. And I say that as a fan fiction writer. There's no mm. undercurrent with Asterix and Obelisk. Oh, really absolutely not. I mean, Frodo. they're very... Um, <laughs> well, that's a, Asterix and Obelisk are pretty basic characters. In re, I mean, most of these characters are, you know, they are, mm. they are pretty basic. Yeah. So, but, yeah, um, anyway. Um, so... The first thing they're going to do is well, he said the the other chieftain mentioned some Romans, so let's start looking at them. Um, one of the Roman camps is not by. Let's go and let's go and ask them and find out if they took it. Yeah. Hold, so. Hold Vardis, no et, bang. <laughs> um, yeah, that you're supposed to ask them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again with the uh, I do like. The, the the artwork's very good here. It's very mm. close to what we would expect of a of a wooden um yeah. setup. The the tents and things obviously it's a bit of colour there for the kids, but the patterns are most of those patterns we see in um Roman mosaics that are mm. around the top of the tents. Yeah. Um and Roman mosaics are gorgeous. I strongly recommend anyone who wants your mind oh, blown, yeah. just Google Roman mosaics and look at the pictures. Yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I've been lucky enough to see some amazing ones in the in the flesh. Uh, actually, oh, it must have been must have been late last year. I think I went down to Fishbourne Palace and had a look around there. Mm. And some of the mosaics there are, even though they're very faded now, they're still pretty breathtaking. Mm. I keep saying I'm going to go to Herculaneum one day and look at those there because they're the very, yeah, you know, because um, Herculaneum was buried under the eruption of Vesuvius. Yeah. So they are as close to mint condition as we're ever going to get. Well, I think we're getting up to a scene here as well. I think Ring's going to appreciate. Um, now, they, they so they go up to the, the Camp Centurion and this, uh, the cauldron, <laughs> what we... Um, you know um, what he's like. So he's demanding them to fill it up with money, and the next thing is that you're, every legionary sticking their head out and said, "Money, money, I'll pay, I'll pay." We're mm. And I again, I just love the way because we'll get to it in a minute. Um, it's just the way you got these Ro Roman soldiers grumbling about their life. Some in the <laughs> there is a historical yeah. A kind of precedent for this because for years and years the Roman Empire uh, would promise the soldiers pay and then they didn't get it and things went yeah. wrong. Um, to the point that by the time you get to the I'm gonna say the second century AD, so sort yeah. of 100s ish, I think. Um, Septimus Severus, um, and the other ones who followed made it policy the army must be paid. Yeah, because they they learn that if you don't pay the army, you get a military uprising. Yep, and they learned that one the hard way. No, numerous times, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're all lining up to be pat pat. Obelix, of course, just he sees a bunch of Roman soldiers being uh lining up. We know what he's going to do. Yeah, and. Uh, so they're like, I love the thing as well. The, the, the top said, "That's funny. What? What did that? Like? That's funny. Why would the Gauls be paying us? They victors, as the man said, old boy. <laughs> you know. Mm. Um. And which is life. Yeah. Um. So, uh, so, so they, they basically Asterix demands they start handing out that money to fit, put in the cauldron, and he's like. I love this. You mean we have to pay to be in the legions now? Join up. It's a man's life, they said. Not a word about having to pay for it. Yeah. And, 
yeah, that's yeah, probably not a wise thing to do. Is the cost? Yeah, so just to pay to be in the army, you know. Yeah, I mean, th there's probably it, that's probably a little bit of a crack at the concept of buying commissions there. I think. Yeah, for um, office, officers and so on. But yeah. Yeah, because the 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 whole thing of um, I know right up until I want to say the late 1900s in Britain. Yeah, you have to purchase a commission. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I know. Ch I know did the, Churchill I, pay for his commission? Oh, most likely, most likely. Uh, I mean, I think you, you could buy. It was only it was up to a certain. I think you could per. I mean, going back to the sort of Napoleonic era, I think you could purchase up to lieutenant colonel. Um, yeah, um, but you um, and it was. I mean, this is in a weird way where I. In a weird way, um, in terms of the armed forces back then, the Royal Navy actually offered more prospects for advancement if you weren't from a rich background than the, the army did. Mm. Um, yeah, because you could you could be promoted, whereas you were yeah. kind of stuck in the enlisted if you went into the army. Yeah, um, and, and generally, and generally, a lot of the and generally a lot of the real richer people bought into the army it was because it was a little more prestigious but uh, you know sort of ironically as well this is um yeah it, yeah but, it fed into a lot of the stereotypes of officers sat behind the mm. wine lines drinking brandy and what have you mm. because mm. they they had no real combat experience they were and, uh, daddy's little rich boys who you know had had their position bought for them it's well a lot of the time it was like it was a lot of the time it was the second sons of um sort of like the gentry or whatever uh, the upper class the the first one then tended to be obviously the, the heir and who inherited mm. the second mm. one or generally went into generally what well, i've went into the church or the army or something like that you know yeah ge generally it went first son inherit second son the soldier third son's a priest yeah generally yeah that, I mean, that's that, kind of the idealized again, version stereotype but now we got now that now that we got on here is um there you've got a revolt on your hands out when um you know it's interesting they're all arguing let's do some collective bargaining and i propose we set up a working party no militant strike. action now strike 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 <laughs> a working party a, yeah but well, what's the old joke about a working party it doesn't oh, yeah <laughs> I like, um, but it's, it's, yeah, I, I like the fact that they're essentially calling for a general strike here. Yeah, yeah, and, they, and they've been, and they, they all, they all did say we get to get the words out to uh, the other camps in the area as well. So they're worried. You know, obviously this is uh, going to spread. Um, anyway, I think they come to the conclusion that the uh, Romans are not. They're not going to get the money out of the Romans. So. Asterisk Snobelix decide to be on their way. Um, um, yeah, I I'm think a, the I'm next one we can get away with because it's quite small. Okay. Um, I think we can get away with that. It's the panel below that that you don't want to be showing. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, we. Yeah, I see what you. I know what you mean, Hesse. So I can get it to about here. Then I'll skip yeah. pages. Um, um, they they so they find a new inn and it's especially shaped like a pirate ship. Yeah. And uh, it seems that the pirates got ran aground and um decided to go legit and set up a uh set themselves up as a, as an inn and they seem to be doing yeah. quite well. Come in, gentlemen. Yeah, so they're doing reasonably well. Um We've skipped the bottom panel, which for anyone who's actually seen the comic will understand why. And, it's just a few puns about cooking and what have you. Yeah, if any, um, yeah, if anyone's seen our previous streams, they'll know know why as well. But um, yeah. we're 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 only going to show those panels uh, when necessary. Um, mm -hmm. To the which plot, I, which it which is going to be not. interesting because I know we got one going up in a, coming up in a few weeks' time where it's going to be unavoidable, but. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. But, um, um, so, yeah, here we go. We've got um, It's the Goals. Um, mm. They want and, their money yeah. back and trash the restaurant in the process. 
Asterix get the gets the impression they must have come ashore to steal the money. And yeah. they cause you know what happens when the pirates come in. And then down the bottom one, I love this in the pot. No, it's nothing in here, just chestnut stuffing for the boar. <laughs> Yeah. I love the fact that they will hide in a cooking pot over a half to get away yeah. from getting a thumping from Obelix. Yeah. I do, I do like the, the comments, Obelix passes, of I don't like them so much now they're landlubbers. They seem mm. out of their depth here all at sea. Yes, yeah. Um, there's, always, there's, always, um, there's always sea puns. <laughs> it's, it's, always. Again, these, these books are very pun, very pun orientated. Yeah, they are. So. Um so and obelix they didn't find the they didn't get a meal they didn't even find the boar they um, certainly didn't find the money yeah it's not even chestnut season he realized so he suddenly obelix realized suddenly hold on he, there was a pirate he could have thumped here and <laughs> hmm. yeah so there we go um, Lots of horse puns to follow. Yeah. They came, they saw, they conquered. Yeah, a lot of chestnut puns here. And I think uh, they're like pirates, so let's sort this back to piracy, I think. Um, mm, yeah. And, it's safer. <laughs> and um, I like this little bit down the bottom here, as she says. This is, I don't think we're going to find the thieves. We're going to have to think of something else. We're going to have to find a way of earning money. Well, we've never done that before. Yeah. And Astrid, um, and Obelix's suggestion. Of, I, yeah, suppose um, we tell people about our adventures. They might pay to listen. Mm. And Obelix is like, that wouldn't make us any money. Asterix, this this is amusing because by this point, Asterix and Obelix was making a killing. Yeah. He said, I'm not um, much of a businessman, but I can tell you that won't make any money. And Obelix is going, we could call them advent the adventures of Obelix the Ghoul. And he's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so it's it's kind of a dig at themselves there, but it's fun. Uh, I like a little bit of self-deprecating um, humour there. I'll give Yeah, you a little bit of meta humour there. Okay. Um, so off they go. Um and Obelix is coming up with all these different ideas. Mm. And yeah, I can train, I can train, train dogs, hunt for, deliver men ears, bash Romans. And, and I see a yeah. parade of people there with ant with livestock. And they're all yeah. merchants going to sell their produce at mar market. And so I see your own money there. So I wouldn't say that the economic growth. Crisis in today's prices, um, we, ju we just about make ends meet. Um, yeah. So they decide they're going to hunt balls and sell them. Yeah. Which is uh, an interesting concept when you've got Obelix about the place. Indeed, indeed. Um, oh, lost my spot there. So got it again. Um, so they've caught, and of course, we've got a load of them rounded up. Should we eat them? No, if we don't, we eat them. We don't have nothing left to sell. So, and as Obelix points out, they're only little boars. <laughs> hmm. it, it makes me, you know, it makes me quite ill to see all that food, food in front of me. <laughs> Are you going to make those poor dumb creatures walk far? So, And I love the fact that you notice this in the corner, dogmatic sort of like, Almost being sheep. like the kind of cheap dog, kind of he's kind of yeah. making a march in order. <laughs> oh yeah. And th this panel at the bottom, this is brilliant. There's so many jokes in this. I'm going to enlarge um, this panel. Sorry, at the bottom. Oh, it's almost too large now. It's the problem. Let's go back. But there we are. I'll make it. I'll make it. I tell you what, I'll do. I'll make it full screen on the. Uh, yeah. So the, the, it. it's, it's it's just great. You've got um pigskin pigskidnicks yeah selling offal which yep. Yep. um one man ordered lettuce yesterday and it's somewhere over there it bolted mm. um 
we've got a nice leg of mutton for an orgy. There'll be 15 of us. Yeah. Um, an orgy is not what you think it is. We can explain um, that a little bit later because there is a joke about this, I seem to believe. Yeah. Um, so generally it's it's on a it's a day at market and it's busy and it's exactly what you want if you're trying to sell. Mm. So So they're finding a pitch to uh what was it? um he's and asterisk the obelix asking if we sell them, if we don't sell them do we eat them we're going to sell them and yeah i love this antibiotics boars. yeah antibiotics boars. so these ones have been you know fed all kinds of they're yeah. not free range let's put it that way no probably not i, I yeah. like it i enjoy um and they're gonna they seem to be and it just sadly so he starts sort of shout balls bought best product that boars, and it looks like the as he and Asterix get into a shouting match to try and sell their boars. Mm. Um, and Obelix doesn't seem too infused by this because he actually he actually kind of recognises the other guy's got better boars than <laughs> they've got to sell as well. So yeah. he's not... Um, um, and say. So they have this great big shouting chat. I love the one at the bottom saying, what are they doing to those boars, sir? Cutting their throats? No, just selling them. Mm. So, and this guy comes up, uh, how much are your boars? Asking Aster Asterix, doesn't, he says, I don't know, uh, see the goods, you know, how much, he said, they're not very big. Told you they're very small. <laughs> Obelix is not helping here. Yeah. And this, yeah, <laughs> poor, poor Asterix kind of gets shafted a bit here. Yeah. Um, because he falls for the classic trick of he didn't say each. Yeah. He said, uh, I'll give you five for sturdy. said, five for sturdy for each boar. He said, no, for a dozen, doesn't, I mean, 14. You've got just enough. And Asterix sells the lot of them for a five sisterity mm. um like, you're selling, and the other guys like you're selling them for five it's just, you know what the hell are you doing and, and he's nervous because now does he have to call his price yeah and you're making prices tumble it's daylight robbery it's a crime 14 prime boards like that for five sisterity bottom will fall out the market mm-hmm oh he said and i says Oh, they weren't uh, as prime as all that then. Only Tiddler, as I was just telling Asterix. And the next, you got this woman coming. Is it you selling a uh, uh, boars at five festerity for fourteen? Mm. And he wants to get, he wants to get over and have a go at Asterix, which yeah, not a wise move. He said, right when he gets back, back tell him, tell him to keep a gross for me. That's what I said. Fourteen, fourteen. <laughs> yeah so yeah um at five at five a throw so someone's mm. decided that poor bloke's been forced to drop his prices to stay competitive mm. or people are assuming he has yeah um you've ruined me i'm gonna have to sell my house and my men is all because of you calm down calm. we haven't eaten much how much are your bosses to you my boy five sisterity each so yeah. the little bit of money they did have has gone on the bore. Which is yeah <laughs> odd. Um so Asterix is not a great businessman, this we established. No. no. Uh so um and he does some more or less admit in the next panel. I don't think we're cut out to be businessmen. This cauldron is still still as empty as ever, and the magic potion won't help us. So, see this little thing here, the performing dog, so they're throwing coins. Mm -hmm. um, gives uh, Obelix an idea. He's going to teach dogmatics to do tricks. So he's dog, you see, sit and beg, get on your paws like this, now roll around the ground. 
And at the bottom thing, you got all you got there is a bunch of dogs, including Dogmatics, laughing at him. Yeah, which is a nice little inversion of what was intended there. Yeah. And then Easy. we've got. I love this next panel as well. Don't waste your time. Dogmatics will never be a performing dog. Not a performing dog. Just see what I've taught him. Dogmatics, two and two is how many? Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> so he's got it. He's got it right, right. Okay, I just realized we do have a couple of panels coming up, and I, uh, I'll try and get a skip. Yeah, bottom um, panels, I think, is. Yeah, there's one in. Yeah, okay. Just slight trigger warning. I'm going to try and get past them. Um, they've come up with the next idea that um, there's a gladiatorial thing called the Palace of the Gladiators. Magnificent prize for anyone who can last a round with a gladiator. Um, don't worry, lads. Not a fight to the death, you, you know. So it's almost, you know. So, so Obelix decides he's going to take on all of the gladiators. Um, so, gladiator number one, whack. Uh, it's like, bravo, well, well done. Young man. Next gladiator. They're all just getting the entire lot of them. Now, there is a panel down the bottom. Um, yeah, it's, it's essentially just the gladiators are lined up and he's been told to pick his opponent. Yeah, there is a panel um, down the bottom there. Uh, it's a little bit. But I will just... I did like the little pun with it though, because it does suggest that he's the cousin of um, one of the pirates. Yeah, so there is a pirate that keeps recurring. Um, yeah. Who, who's drawn like this, and it's. I wish I'd gone for piracy. I might have risen in the world. Yeah. Um. So apparently, it's a family trait that this these poor people keep getting the wrong end of mm. Obelix. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so, but what's happened here? I'll just as quickly as possible. Poor show. So the audience is leaving. It's right, I'll skip that now. I showed yeah. it, and that's uh, so um, off we go. Um, he said, "You finished off my eight gladiators, and what's what's more, they've just given their notice. They say they'd rather go back to fighting in the circus. Mm. The same old ground. Have a Caesar, you know what? Yeah, you know, which is he's doing the." Hail Caesar, for those, those about to die, we salute you, and all that jazz. He, he's doing it in Latin, sorry. But, um, yeah, you know, um, the, the, there's an interesting academic understanding of this comment of um, those about to die because it's only ever mentioned once in an ancient text and there's no other evidence for it, but it seems to have captured the public imagination. Um, whether it was common practice or not, no idea. Because for the most mm. part, gladiators would not die. Um, gladiators were yeah. expensive to train. They were not just any random slave. They they may have technically been slaves, but they were expensive to train. So yeah. a fifty percent loss rate at the rate they held gladiatorial games, it would just not be productive. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, if prisoners and stuff been thrown to the lions or made to fight to the death, yes, um, more so than gladiators, I would say. Gladiators were more, uh, yeah, it, 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 very carefully choreographed and very carefully planned. Um, maximum entertainment, minimum actual damage, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, um, so they get the, his magnificent prize. There's a load, load of little statuettes, trophies. Um, he's asked, like, we'll have to wait centuries for this lot to be worth anything. Um, and so he said, I'm going to get an idea. He says, uh, you know, so he's got this idea. He gets this idea. Sorry, I just realized I'm going to turn my camera back on a sec. Um, um he said, "Look, I've run out of gladiators." He says, "Well, what? Why don't you? Well, you know, why don't you, you know? I'll be your gladiator. They can come and take me on." Um. So the public, he said, "He's like, all right. The public will enjoy seeing a little titch like you get beaten up." 
And so, of course, they all look at Asterix thinking, you know, and looks at the way he's a magnificent mm. su surprise to anyone who can last a round with this yellow whiskered midget of an uncertain age. <laughs> yeah, they all have it. Um, this is classic blimming, like 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 stuff you'd see in Victorian style carnivals. To be honest, very yeah. classic with the like the box, like the uh, when they'd have the travelling troop of boxers or wrestlers. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and generally, it was the it was the one who looked that. Generally, some of the times it was the one that looked the easiest to take on. Was the was the one who was especially in the wrestling troops. Generally, were the ones who were going to take you down and stretch you the hell out of you, you know. Yeah. Um. So of course, Asterix had a little swig of the magic potion. Um. He's sure to get a prize, and the next thing, and next, so who goes there? The audience is getting whacked off one by one by one. Yeah. Is it right? I think that's a lot. Now you can pay me. Is it what? Pay you. Pay you. Pay you. Pay you. You and your fat friend did to my gladiators and my entire audience. And you want, you've ruined me. And now you want me to pay for it on top of it. Yeah. So uh, Obelix there, as usual. What fat friend? Yeah. Obelix maintaining he's not fat, he's just big boned. Yeah. And he gives him back the they give him back the statues. So Yeah. So they come on to the next little uh um idea. A modern theatre, the Romans are building them everywhere, all over the place. The um you know, Aurelio Aurelium Vienne. Well it says everywhere Vienna in there, but it's uh, not Vienna as we know it is uh, but yeah, no, it's there's um, or orange uh, and Vienne. So I just think yeah. it's, it's really and I love this. Clearly, these these are actors, and he says, You sir are a barbarian, a Philistine. Mm. Let me let me tell you, I have performed at Rome before Julius Caesar himself, you know. I've taught Alexandra Queen Cleopatra through a party for me. Um so it's not just that these are you got some real cut pair of divas here. Yeah, right, divas. I've had a standing ovation at Masilla. Yeah, you know, it's um uh I'll have to your notions of theatre are, are, are literally antiquated, Aristophanes, Pilatus, Terence. They're all on the, the shelf. They've they've had to make way for the new drama, which is uh, something to say, which is something to say. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, the the, the humour in that is actually all three that he's um, made mention of there. Mm. The stories are, despite being ancient stories that do have something to say, Aristophanes in particular is still performed mm. quite, you know, yeah. quite often. Yeah. Because um, that's the one that pops into my head. So, yep. Um... So he's, he's just had a couple of actors because he says, I can replace you with the next two idiots who come my way. And what's more, I'll gain on the deal. And two of the next two idiots who come his way. Who do you think? Asterix and Obelix. Um, so they decide they're going to give acting a try. Uh, they, they, they mm. said, you know, so he says, so he says, does it pay? He says, well, is it? Um, he said, personally, you know, got, so he thinks he's going to earn some money. I think the guy's sort of uh, leading on that they, they could make a bit of money off of this, mm. to be honest. But And um, it's the, the, the theatre. It's quite well drawn again, I feel. Yeah, very well drawn. Um, you can tell uh, the, the seating arrangements are very common. To me, that looks like it's based off Pompeii or somewhere similar. Mm, I've been yeah. to the Pompeii Amphitheater and it's very similar to that. Um, well, what's left of it. Mm. Um, and you can imagine that that's how it would have looked built up. Yeah. The, the main mean, stage itself looks more like the globe, though. Yeah, it's really, it's kind of got a, it's, yeah, it's got an almost a element of that to it as well. Um, I've, I would admit somewhere I've never I've been to see a play is the Globe, but I I I 
tell you now i don't know i, I don't know that it's, i particularly want to sit there for several hours on those on those seats in the globe no it's like a church they're like church pews um yeah, and i not. went on our honeymoon and they are it, it, I, I can Im I can definitely imagine when that place was a working theatre. I can definitely imagine people going round, renting out cushions. Yeah, because there is no way you can sit on them pews for three or four hours. Right. So we're taking up. Uh, um, we're taking up um, the rehearsal thing, and these uh, one of the lines here: orgies, orgies. We want orgies. Mm. And it turns out he's got a man in the that he's gonna have a. Well, I'll just um, we'll get I'll get to the end of this bit, then I might ask you to come in on some of the. He said, "Where's our discuss this audience member?" So we got someone they're planting in there. So, so he said, "You know, forget your line." He said, "Orgies, oh, orgies, oh, we want orgies. Stop! This is disgraceful. They're making fun of us." So there's a plant in the in the audience here to try and. Do, you but touched on something before about Roman orgies and not what perhaps people think. Yeah, so everyone so, thinks of a Roman orgy in the highly sexualized, you know, mm. um, people, you know, sleep with the nearest person to you and move on to the next one. That's not what a Roman orgy was. A Roman orgy was, a very, first of all, a high class event. So it's not, you know, as you would imagine, it's not red curtains mm. and, you know, a queue of, what's the correct term for it these days? A, you know, a queue of people coming in to be paid no. for their services kind of thing at all. No, the, no, no. Um, a Roman orgy is more, it's food. It's good food. It's good drink. It's it's good conversation. It it's closer in nature to French salons than mm. it is to what we would perceive an orgy to be. Yeah. I Although mean, it's, while it's, I'm at yeah. it, there was no such practice of eating till you vomit to eat some more. That was something it's I just, meant to ask you about that because I'd I'd often heard that and that whole thing just didn't made a like. Very little yeah. sense. What it is that there was, the, there's an understanding of where the idea came from. So there is in public buildings in ancient Rome, there was an area called the vomitorium. Yes, that's and correct. historians assume that this was where people went to throw the guts up and come back and eat more. The no. thing is, the vomitorium is basically the back door exit yes so you know everyone piles in to do the event and everyone piles out at the end it's kind of the equivalent of you know you go to a concert or a football match and they lift the stalls at the end and everyone just dives out and the idea is the people were vomited into the streets that's where the concept comes from mm. um so yeah the, the romans were very proper and the romans had um, ideas of virtue that said you're every basically mm. everything in moderation. Moderation was a you know very yeah. close to being a Roman virtue. So the idea yeah. of them eating till the sick and eating more is just a complete antithesis of everything mm. the Roman ideal was. And yeah that that uh yeah but it i mean the modern i mean i'll just say the modern um word like vomit i think is derived from a latin um which does mean to ex to exit or something like that I, yeah I, to, like, to 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 literally to let it yeah. up, you know to let it all out to let everything out yeah something yeah. like that yeah to exit it's, that's where the, that's where the modern yeah that's where the but, modern but that's word what it is the linguistic from. drift and the the confusion caused that perception mm. for a long time it never happened the reason you see in all these sort of 1950s movies scandalous orgies with too much food too many mm. women and too much wine is because they are based on the anti um imperial propaganda and rhetoric that was used so for example the idea of 
you know mm. um hop swatch makes an interesting well, point yeah. eat till you, eat yeah. until you, you were vomiting came out in the 1500 1600 i think an ostrich feather was used to induce the vomiting yeah so yeah. again it's totally different um but when emperors you know died or were had someone um overthrow them what inevitably followed would be a public um procedure by where their name was destroyed yeah not necessarily obliterated although that did happen um sometimes literally off monuments and things mm. but they were just dragged through the dirt and it's pure propaganda most of the time this is yeah. why we have so many um so much speculation about were the emperors really that incestuous were they really that greedy mm. were they really that stupid probably not consider yeah. the sources i think yeah. some yeah i mean i mean for some of them um i mean let's take one of the most obvious example let's say nero i mean there's no two ways he was he was a i mean he was a dangerous nasty lunatic. piece of work in the, the last few work. years but there's a lot of stuff that's written about him which is clearly exaggerated and yeah i mean some of it, the famous some of it one about nero when while rome burned the poor bloke wasn't even in rome no and um, but there's, there, there was one there. there was one account when he heard that he rushed back to rome to Actually, to help. Yeah. And he did. He rushed back to help. He fired a lot of money mm. into rebuilding Rome after yeah. the fire. He, he even put and up everything a lot, else. He, he often put up even put up a lot of the poor who lost their homes in his own yeah. like palace grounds. Yeah. So and then because he'd put them up there, he, he built another palace. And the reason people disliked him, the thing is rebuilding infrastructure costs money. He raised mm. taxes. Yeah. Either was that. And people don't like paying taxes, no matter what it's for. Yeah. And B, there's the there's the story, and I'm not entirely sure how accurate it is, that on as part of the taxes and as part of the regeneration of Rome, he built a new palace for himself. The Golden House. The I Golden think. House, the and golden. the Golden House was exactly as decadent as you would imagine. It, yeah. Money was no object. Yeah. no expense spared well, one, and one, therefore... of the, um, one of the things just outside because it was not far from the roman forum mm. i think it would have been on the palatine hill which is you know obviously yeah. not far from that but there was a the, yeah, there was a private he had a a, a, colo a statue of himself as the sun god a colossus and a private lake that was um later so, so the colossus the... you know where there is yeah, actually a statue they... outside the Colosseum now yeah yeah that's where the original colossus was yeah that's why it's called the Colosseum. Yeah. that building is not a Colosseum; it's a flavian amphitheater yeah was but it was called the, the Colosseum because that statue used to be there yeah the and flavian... all that bit where you walk in front of the Colosseum now used to be the man-made lake yeah so yeah, that was so. Which is, I suppose, in a way, was partly of obliterating some of Nero's memory um, yeah. by the Flavians. Um, and it is; it's just dragging the name through the mud. Yeah. Anything that sticks, throw the dirt and see what sticks. But it was, you know, that's so why so also, many of them accused of incest, yeah. not this, because it wasn't taboo or yeah. because it was a, a bad thing, but because it was taboo and it was one of the worst things you could yeah. say about someone. Well, I was going to say on the thing with the Flavians and all that, I mean, it was great politics what they did because not only did they like literally look how decadent and this, you know, this this statue, that, you know, this is this just old Nero's mm. built to himself. Says, what we're going to rip that down and we're going to build this massive amphitheater as our gift to the people. It, good yeah. politics. Vespasian and Titus were no blooming fools. Um, yeah, no, bread and circuses, a lot of it. Yeah, Domitian maybe a little bit, but anyway, but we're off subject, but yeah. Um but yeah, so, definitely anything you read about a Roman emperor, take it with a pinch of salt, even absolutely. if it was written by said Roman emperor, especially then. Always yeah. question who benefits. Who benefits from the way this is written? Yeah. And anyway, yeah. yeah. We we better get back to this because um ring's yep. got a stream in about 50 minutes so we've got to get to the end yep, of this cool. so um 
this 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 is um he said basically all all the fa that the guy's telling him is, is after this thing this will be your cue you just come up there and say the first thing that comes into your head so he's basically giving obelix just to ad lib say whatever it is and he's like what if nothing comes into it yeah um um don't you care about the message and then i do love the idea this should be entertaining i hear it's quite disgusting yes hard try hard time getting seats um yeah anything that's scandalous in the theater sells out yeah which is a thing you gotta you gotta think a big uh, i'm guessing he's like a prefect or some or a governor or someone there there's someone quite uh high up down in there and uh so the show yeah. starts it almost feels like as well and i'm not sure how common it is but it feels almost like a proto pantomime yeah the it way does they feel like like that. the audience and um you know the the callbacks and things so they do the, he does the little thing about um orgies there in there mm -hmm. and you're just and the guy in the audience this roman guy stop stop this is disgraceful they're making fun of this and he's right and you see the women shouting there and the, his governor he's quite happy for us to go on mm. throw him out museum roman relics you know <laughs> he seems to be quite happy now it comes obelix's turn yeah he's gonna go out there and he goes out and he's just say something whatever comes into your head and he's stay he's, there's a bit of stage right and the first thing he says these Romans are crazy. Mm. And for some reason, that was too much for this guy. Yeah, because it's definitely... Um, yeah. That's a bit too on the nose, we think. Yeah. Uh, I love that. They've got these... There they come with the soldiers on there. Very well produced, Joe. Yeah, it's getting it good. Oh, they're, bit, they're overdoing it a bit now. It's not too lifelike. Mm. And Asterix decides, now let's get out of here. Um and later outside the uh the jail um this is the, the main actor this is a uh, so would you like us to get us out of this and he said no fear just been booked at the circus of rome one night stand of course but what a show lions tigers to whole works you know Dead mm. good. yeah i do like the idea as well um fat so you ought to go into the theater what personality what a goal i'll tell you what um I tell you, he, he's. I just going to say he did actually call Obelix Fatso a number of times there and got away with that, which is uh, yeah. Because uh, I think that there's this understanding, isn't there, that hmm. Obelix kind of takes it when it's men affectionately. Yeah, he seems to. Or uh, yeah, or, or or he doesn't always pick up on it. So they're moaning that they're moaning that they're moaning there woes here there's still no money in that they get thrown a bit of change and he's like and you got the guy there saying oh, i don't well i'm really i don't like seeing people say well i'm so happy he says i've won all this money he says where at the races I only put in a few sisterity i put them on the chariot and it won so see so the takes them to the hippodrome um that's the hippodrome he says good luck so he said Asterix is like, well, you know, we do have a bit of uh, cash for once. I'd hate to risk it. He, says, he said, but like Obelix, like, there's no risk. So we, we, we place our bet and we fill the cauldron. That's what he said. That's what he said, but that's not what happens. <laughs> that is not what happens. Um, um, and I and do mean that in real life as well. Be, you know, don't gamble what you can't afford to lose, folks. I used to work in the gambling industry. I've seen good people go down hard. Mm. If you can't I, afford to lose it, don't bet it. I, I, I'll say I had, I had a former work colleague who had a serious, serious gambling addiction, and it was, uh, it yeah, it messed him up badly. Yeah. Um, or as the adverts badly. in the UK put it, when the fun stops, stop yeah you know um if you're not enjoying yourself there's something wrong mm. um so off they go to place the bet and they run across this um <clears throat> expert um oh i got kicked you can out back the meat where yeah 
I got kicked out of my own stream for a second there. So, oh. sorry. So, um, yeah, um, this is actually a very good explanation of... Um, sorry, I'm just going to get... Sorry, I'm just going to get Kendall back up again. So we've got it on screen. There we go. So where were we before we kicked out? About, we were talking about the gambling thing. Um, yeah. That's not how each way bets work in real life, but it yeah. kind of is too. Um, the each way bets would work if you were betting on individual horses using this method. Yeah. If that's how they work in real life. Oh. But obviously when you're four horse drawn, four horses per chariot doesn't work quite so well. Mm. Um, I love the name of this Scott Gall as well, uh, Confidence Tricks. Yeah. Um, um, he's like, give me your money. I'll place the bet for you. It's like, all I ask is half the winnings. Are you sure he can't lose? It's, it's impossible. Now you go into the Hippodrome and up the whites, the reds, the blues, the greens. Um, and this is, I mean, I mean, we I think we touched on this a bit before chariot racing in the Roman Empire. Yeah, but I mean. Chariot racing was very, very big. Um, and they were very much like the, mm. you know, the sort of the fans who go to football matches, go oh, to every yeah. match, was, always this in the was, gear. This was the sport of the people. This yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, more, so than, more so than gladiatorial contests, to be honest. Chariot racing was the, the sport of the people. Mm, um, definitely, yeah. Um, and I mean, you can see why it's it's the 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 thing again. And I'm just looking at the artwork on this. Yeah, just something I want to say because it's always drawn like this, but it's not how it was done. Mm. Um, and this will give you an idea of the kind of skill involved in being a chariot racer. The two horses on the edge are technically loose; they're not being led. Yeah. Now it's not drawn like that on this, but. The way the chariots are, are sort of reined up, it's mm. the two horses in the middle that are being read because they used to have two horse chariot races as well. Yes, but the idea of the two horses on the outside is it makes it harder because the charioteer is not directing them, mm. doesn't have anything to pull him to direct them, he's only directing the two middle horses, so those other two can go off all over the shop. And it's the skill of the charioteer to keep those two horses in line and the training of the horses themselves. Mm. Um, so it, it, it's it's not an easy job, and charioteers no. would routinely die if they came off. Oh, it was... Uh, it was uh, like, like jockeys in, in the modern era. It, 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 um, I'm going to say, it, 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 was mu it wasn't much safer than the gladiatorial games, let's put it that way. It, it wasn't, wasn't much safer. No, I mean, over the last, I would say, 10 years, horse riding has got a lot safer. Mm. Um, even the national, you know, it used to be two or three horses a year would go down and yeah. stay down. And I'd say now the it's yeah, one, the national, one every other year. I mean, the national still is, it is, a, it is a bit cruel in its way, but they've definitely like softened a lot of the hedges and stuff on, over the recent years and yeah, and um, lowered a lot of the jumps to make it better for the yeah. horses so they don't go arse over and yeah. Um and, and it's safer for the jockeys as well, and you know, there's ways around it. Um, but with this, it imagine coming off your chariot in this with you know two or three behind you. You you're dead before you hit the ground. If not more, so you 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 hope you're dead before you hit the ground. Because oh. let's be honest, being trampled by half a dozen horses is not a good way to go. Yeah. Um. So that that's where we are. But their bet has right. now lost. Well, no, so, sorry, sorry, True Tech. I didn't mean to delete that comment. That was accidental. So, oh. but YouTube YouTube didn't like it for some reason. So. Yeah. Um. um so let's but see. I, but to be honest, to be honest, I will. I will ask guys in the chat. Be a, just be a little bit careful on it because we've had issues with these streams before with YouTube. Uh, of course, um, Asterix and Obelix cheering on the Blues. Look what I have at the bottom of that. There's their money yeah. gone. Yeah. Um. 
So, um, off um, we go to eat. Yeah. Uh -oh. um, and then the other guy coming up to him saying, look, you know, oh, sorry, bad luck, mate. Says, but I've got, I know the nephew of the, uh, can you pronounce the word? Is it Arig? I, I can't. Origa. Oh, uh, nephew of the. Name of, what's the Roman, the Latin for charioteer? Is it Agura? Agura. Agura. Yeah, Agura of Green. Yeah. Mm. So this guy claims he's got inside information. Um, yeah. Anyone of us come walks up to you on a racetrack and tells you that, don't trust it because at the end of the day, if they've got their information is that good, why are they putting their own money on it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, so I, I, I wouldn't no, ever believe a gonna, random tip offered like that. I say you want to. I'd be. I'd be. I'd, I've actually done this to someone at. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember. It was a dog race. Some one time. I think it was. Um, was it or was it Goodwood? I can't remember, but I, there was someone who did me a blooming um, like tout card to me. He said, oh, if you, you, you go ask for me on this one. And I said, well, I said, well, half actually implies you're going to put some of your own money up on this and you'll give me the tip. Mm. He's like, oh, I'm not doing that. And I said, well, you obviously ain't that fucking confident on it. Exactly. He's not willing to put his own money up. Something's not right. To be honest generally as well i think you probably find a lot of those people will just take your money and won't even put the bet on yeah let's be clear about that so yeah definitely um so i wouldn't hand over money if you're gonna go bet bet yourself um you can take it you can take you can take his advice if you want to then up to you if you want to split with them but i wouldn't hand you don't hand money over to touts yeah um if they or if they say to you give me the money and i'll place the bet for you tell them ask them which horse which race yeah um but i i'm a great believer in um unless you're handing over to a licensed registered bookie at a at a racetrack yeah. don't let go of your money yeah um well so anyway you see there as well the guy who made all the money earlier he's blown it all as mm. well sat next to them um at Obelix, well asterix has only got like a handful, few bronze coins left let's get a bite to eat so figure out yeah. the last um well, i love this barkless bank I love mm. that. so what's that a temple near enough it's a it's a <laughs> roman bank where yeah where they keep yeah very near enough um there's a great story about the ancient greeks and building temples for gold so mm the greeks essentially set up a, a a cooperative if you like of greek city states the idea is they all pay into a central pot mm. and if one of them gets invaded the money goes to protect them and defend is this them the, is this the delian league yeah mm. um and so the athenians got a little bit up their own fell a little bit for their own propaganda i think mm. um and their own con and spent yeah. all this money on you know lavish infrastructure mentioning, and temples sorry. mentioning no names <coughs> pericles sorry <clears throat> yeah um built a temple and put the money in it but then when the other cities wanted it back yeah it's gone well this is the thing it was supposed it was called the dealing league because it was supposed to be on the island of delios and they moved to the mm. uh, they moved it to athens and it was um yeah yeah because so the, the was, point of the delian island was it's kind of in the middle of everything and no yeah. one city state had control over it yeah so um so back to our, let's go back to our story so they come up with the next story of course we're going to rob we're going to perform a bank robbery mm. so asterisk size we'll, we'll um we'll get a room for a couple of nights we're going to stake out the bank and um he sends a, he sends Obelix across there. He says, "Just go and have a little look round, look innocent." He said, "How mm -hmm. do I do that?" He says, "Just, you know, just, you know, just do what you can." And straight away, I love this. This Roman guard pricks up and says, "Hey there, you look like someone who's thinking of robbing a bank. You haven't got a hope. The bank is constantly guarded. The guard changes at noon and six in the evening and at midnight." And there's and there's there's men inside all night. The gold is kept in a cellar with a heavy iron door. 
which is a secret catch <laughs> in mm. the ornamental molding. So don't go get it any ideas. And then Obelix comes back and says, I didn't learn anything. He saw me through before I could get any ideas. Mm. <laughs> Basically, he's just told him every thing he needs. They need to rob a bank. Yeah. Um, so they end up staking it out for the next couple of nights, um, taking notes. Um, mm. And Asterix has uh, devised up this plan. It's on, he's written out there. And it's just one of those things. Dogmatics will scare saying and keep watch. Um, I'm hiding behind the third column. I leap in. And he's got this quite complex little operation. He's like saying this will have to be, this will have to be, you know, carried out um during this time and to question and then we get the gold. He said, Do you understand that? No. So Asterix just throws it away. Never mind. We plow through them, pick up the cash and beat it. Okay, I got okay. it. Nice, simple plan. Yeah, just smash and grab, no nonsense. Mm. I do love the idea, you know, um, plans never survive first contact with the enemy, but when you've got obliques on your side, they don't even get that far. You don't need, you don't really need to plan that but that much on something like this. Mm. So they break into the bank. Um, this is, hold them up. This is, uh, Where's where's the money? It's usually down in the cellar, but and then they're going down into the. Uh, he goes down into to it, smashes down the door. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So he says, "I think I've come here to take money." He says, "We don't have any money, poor fellow." He says, "Not a Sesterius." He says, "That's that's why Caesar levies taxes, you know, quid pro quo, old chap." Um, mm. So they got no money in the bank. Not and um, so they go off frustrated again. Yeah, with the and, bank people laughing at them now. And it's just it's kind of a thing in a way that they're they go off and they're still starting crying now because they're thinking we're never going to be able to fill this. We're never going to be able to go back home. They've pretty much given up hope now. Mm. And um, yeah. It's a good idea to take the. It's, it's, it's at least um, good idea to take the cool cauldron back. Uh, they can still make onion soup. This is. I'm sure that'll be a great. Says, so they basically he's saying they're going to go to Chief Who's Moral Elastics Village, and admit to his failure and um, and you know take take responsibility, but just you know a few you know but little while just during. Make way, make way there for the tax collector, Julius Caesar, special emissary. We've got one last chance here to fill the cauldron with a sesterity. Yeah. And I love this. So we could make way for it, well, it ambush the tax. I love this tax, man. I'm going to have to enlarge this, actually. This is the tax, man. Please give your one oh, well your reasons to hold this up. Oh, sorry. Did I miss something? Yeah, I accidentally clicked something and deleted a lot of true text messages. I apologise. Um, um, you apologise, true I don't know what I did, my mouse. I don't know what's happened. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, um, oh has he, been, he hasn't been hidden from the channel, has he? Uh, I don't it, know. I think I've accidentally true, true timed him out. True tech. Uh, friendly fire. We're so, sorry about that. That was, that was accidental. Yeah, sorry. I'm just, just very... Has he accidentally timed yeah. you out? Um, so it, it's, I think it's a five minute timeout or something, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. Sorry about um, that. Friendly fire. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so here they go. Now they want to rob the tax collector. They're going to pull a Robin Hood. Yeah. Um, well, I, these I, ones, Hops is right. This one amuses me. Um, I love this. Um, uh -huh. I love this. where 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 are you at? Sorry, I love this. I love this tax collector. I love him. I love. Mm. It's just like, please give one your reasons for holding this up. Two, an apology. Position Three. permission to, to proceed. To yeah, he, he he's a bureaucrat. Yeah. Occupation: Are you a ordinary passers-by? B motivated by friendly intentions. C bandits. 
give us your money if you don't want to be fumped. And he's a and he's a and he's just in the, yeah. Final demand. Do not offer us physical violence. All claims to be addressed to Caesar Julius, City of Rome. Yeah, I love it. Uh, um, he's just he talks like a, a tax form, which is perfect. Yeah, I love it. Um, so Romans and charge. I do like that. Yeah. At last, I thought we were never going to get through the formalities. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And they got they got the trust. They've got. It says you will be taxed on the sum of which you are about to take possession. I says I want to fill my cauldron. If there's any left over, you can have a tax return. Mm. Your instalment on account will be deductible from the sum finally due. It says, oh look, it's exactly what we need, Obelix. Mm. Um. Um. Uh, I, I want a side receipt. <laughs> yeah. So, so now we can take the money to, money to Chief Moral, who's Moral of the Lustics. Um, and um, then suddenly Asterix has a little s smell something. He says, hmm. That yeah. Money has no smell. And smells extremely good. Come on, Obelix. And you can see there, Asterix it does not look like a happy camper. Yeah, there is actually a saying in French that money doesn't stink, so yeah. it's kind of a nod to that as well. So off yes. they go up to this village now. With the Again, cheese, I love that. I love right that. on the cliff edge. I, yeah, I love that that landscaping, Ken. Yeah. Um, not necessarily the safest place to build a house, but um. Mm. Um. But you can see the logic that the chief gets the best. The best view in the highest yeah. position. Mm. So, and uh, so he's going up. Where does Chief Moose Morals Elastics that and uh, comes out to him? He says, Oh, Chief Morals, well, here's the money. And he's like, Oh, where, where, where? It's Asterix. So, I'm returning the money. You know, this is dirty. You entrusted to, to my care. I rather think the tax collector's already called. He, says, um, he said, that's right. He, he didn't find any money here. And, uh, you know, where he thanks very much. And an asterisk stops him. He said, mm. you know, these sturdy smell of onion soup. Yeah, they come from a tax collector's test. If these sturdy smell the same as those you entrusted to me, it's because they are the same. And he explains this. He's, he's basically figured this out. The night when you came to our village and took me aside to give me information, you had a couple of your men come in and stole the money. You used the mo money to pay your taxes, thus um, keeping it within in with the mm. Romans. Knowing very, you know, effectively, an asterisk sums it up. And in fact, you know, he said, "Well, look, we'll move. Ma you knew we'd move mountains to repay our debts." In other words. We're paying your taxes for you. Yeah. So the idea was, um, he pays his taxes to the Romans using money that they think's been stolen. They go to earn the money in some other way, and then um, he doubles yeah. his money essentially. Oh, true text back. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was accidental. Hmm. Um. So. This is the first time he actually see, uh, so he, um, he calls his men to him. Of course, Obelix is going to plow through them. This but, amuses me. Um, yeah. Obelix has got no qualms whatsoever about just smacking the Romans about. Yeah. But for when he's smacking goals about, he wants a reason. Yeah. And um, and then he gets his next bit when Obelix has plowed through them. Wait a minute. No fighting between brothers, right? Just, uh, particularly if some brothers are stronger than other brothers. Mm. And it's, it's, this is a bit weird because obviously I'm guessing Asterix has finished his magic potion. Yeah. And he's I mean, a good and it's the first time I've actually seen a good old fashioned sword fight with the uh the chief here who gets yeah. the better of him, disarms him, and is about to finish Asterix off. And you see the the, the cauldron over the side with a sisterity, a bit of the edge of the cliff falls off. His money. And the chief goes with. And for a moment, you think we're going to get a Lion King moment. Yeah. Um, um, 
So well, Asterix pulls him up and said, basically, I think we've settled our debt. He says, you've been punished um, for your avarice already. So might be a little. My sister, he's like, he's crying, he's lost his money. Then, mm. Yeah. My sister, they're no good to anyone now. It's however, one of those, isn't it? It's, um, however, yeah. And we'll just yeah. get on this quickly. Yeah. I think so, we're okay with this top panel. Yeah, so we're not yeah. zooming too close. No, we're not zooming in on it. Um, Chief, it just so happens the pirate ship happens to be sailing under the cliff at them. Yeah. And and just for once they get their happy. Yeah, they get showered with money. And here we go back. We're up to the village. And, and Obelix asks the question, but what I never did understand was why anyone would put money instead of that cauldron instead of onion soup in the first place. Which was the question he asked right at the start. So it was nice and yeah. circular. So that was Asterix and the Cauldron. Um, yeah, I mean, get rid of that. I like this one. It's it's got a it's got a bit of a feel of sort of Aesop's Fables to it, hasn't it? Mm. A, a little yeah. bit of a, a moral story of don't value money too much. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I said. The um, pirates finally get a break. Yes, they do. Yeah. Finally. Um. um and it is one of those, isn't it? Uh, but it's nice. There's, it's just a good, clean, fun story. Not mm. too much politics. Not too much this, that, and the other. Enough history to keep me occupied. Um, yeah, you know, and that that's kind of where we're at with it. Mm. Well, I believe the next one, which would be, um, will be the next book. I believe will be Asterix in Spain. Which is, do you know what? I'm not sure I've ever read that one. And I've read most of them, but I'm. It's mm. one, but then again, I've thought that a couple of times before. Then when I've read them, I've oh, I remember now. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm not sure I've actually read this one yet. So Asterix in Spain. Let's have mm. a look. I think that's the next one. Because it'll be Asterix number thirteen. Um. Mm, I think Something this is like no, I think this is number 13, number 14. I think that is, uh, yeah. So the next one is, yeah, Asterix in Spain, yeah. So we're getting to the late 60s now with this, um, yeah. So a few changes there. Mm. Yeah. Uh... So, yeah. That one looks like it's going to be fun. Uh, it looks like a, a fairly standard rescue story. Yeah. Um, and a little bit of, I feel like there's going to be a lot of French-Spanish interaction for that one. I can see this. Fun. I can imagine there's going to be a few shots taken the, the Spanish, Spanish in this. Tiny like, bit, yeah. I mean, it, it depends. Again, sometimes it's uh, it depends on what kind of nature and jest it's done in. Like, I mean, when like Asterix and the Goths. I mean, yeah, they, they were taking some pretty hard shots at the Germans, and I feel with like Asterix in Britain, there was a lot more done in jest. Um, yeah. A lot of it will be in jest. Um, with the French and the Spanish, I imagine a fair bit of it will be in jest because they, they have a, a reasonably good relationship um, and have done since the end of the Second World War. But there is a lot of historical baggage going back to when, you know, nearly every war in Western Europe was Britain, Spain, France and some combination thereof. Um, but yes, Robert X, you are right. He should be Asterix in Hispania, but Technically we'll speaking, let them gloss yeah. over that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll let them. Um, we'll let. Um, so, um, you got any, anything you like? We're getting near to the end of this one. You got anything you'd like to plug here, see? Or? Um, plug wise, Media Musings to follow um, at the top of the clock. Yes, absolutely. Um, we are doing. 
hopefully if we manage to finish it the last bit of Les Mis, uh with ring over on his channel and i'm sure he will be a very good husband and put the link in the chat for me if he's still there he should be um ring that'd be helpful but... and we can do that um that's pretty much this and if i'm on media musings is all i do at the moment um it's been a long long few months and i'm just yeah ugh. i've worked full time throughout this entire pandemic so i've not had a lot of free time but right. we're, we're getting into the swing of things and we'll I, see i'm going to say if um his link to his, his channel is in my in the description here if any of you are watching this and not sub to his please sub to her um <laughs> you know Every time you say that, I get two or three new subs. So thank well, you. Well, I, I try and do, you know. Um, yeah. I, I, I showed out my own channel the other day and got, got a few. Um, speaking, yeah. speak, actually, that's a good segue. Speaking of shilling out, um, I do believe I'm on the iNetwork tonight. Um, I don't think the stream's been put up yet, so I can't put the link to it in the chat. I do believe I'm doing the Uncalled Force show tonight. So that, mm. that could, that's going to be quite late for anyone in the UK. But. Um, probably about prime time for i suppose to the us so looking for looking forward to that i know i've done the shills a couple of times i've never done the, the uncalled for so i'm looking forward to this see what yeah. they have in have in store for me it is but they are very fun have you have you been sent your avatar yet i uh, no, not for the i network no um no they, they are fun um so yeah, and don't forget if you if you're following Ring now, he is the puppy god, um, because yep. I completely um, just destroyed his stream praise, last week. Praise, I praise floof, praise floof, yeah. praise floof, puppy god! All hail the puppy god! Um, so there is that. A uh, few new faces in the chat this week. First time I've seen True Tech, and we yeah. had uh, Edward was in there earlier. I yeah, think that's how yeah. it's pronounced. Uh, so good uh, to see you, folks. True tech's, you... Been, true tech's been in my chats before, I think, but yeah, yeah. Doesn't look that familiar to me. Um, so ringing the hypocrisy over there, but I think um, if you're chilling, that anything else you want to show, Jeff? Um, oh, nothing really on, uh, nothing planned on my channel. I will say that I did. For those who missed it yesterday, I did do a stream with uh, Hopswatch regarding um the danish cult leader torben sondergaard who's currently residing in the united states trying to seek asylum um um first of all anyone here is not sub to hops watch they should be but that was yeah. um um that was an, that was an interesting street he's been he's been following um torben what torben sondergaard's activities for some time and uh mm -hmm. I, this this guy he's kind of under the radar i suppose in the united states or whatever but he he's dangerous especially what he's doing at the moment so um yeah he, he he's he's a he's a um nasty piece of work mm. i think quite a few of them are so yeah so um yeah Okay, so everybody over to Ring's channel in about 15 minutes. I don't know that I'm going to pop into that one because I don't know nothing about Les Mis, so don't uh, feel right being in that one. Um, but, um, yeah, if, um, please go over to One Ring's channel and, again, also sub to Ring if you've not subbed to One Ring 42 already. Please go and sub to him. Um, and... Um, Otherwise, I we shall just uh, we shall just see you later, and we shall hopefully see you next week. So yeah, let's wrap up. Give your chance to grab a drink, um, yeah. and then head on over to see Ring. Uh, either way, whether you're heading there or not, as always, take care, be good, and if you can't be good, be careful. Okay, salute.